What's up, everybody? Casey Santana here with Rich Soil Podcast. I have a special guest for you guys today. Uh, Dan, welcome. Thank you for joining us on our Rich Soil Podcast. Fits perfectly right with that beautiful bouquet of flowers you have right behind you. What's going on? All good. Thank you for having me, Casey. Glad to be here today. Yeah, I appreciate I appreciate your time. Uh, we we had the pleasure of meeting um, through the chamber and uh, getting a little bit of background in your correlation with helping Battle Girls Foundation. So took my heart there and just kind of want to know who you are and how cannabis plays a role in your life. Uh, to my understanding, you're here SoCal. Correct. I'm based in Los Angeles right now. Okay, cool. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, you have a morning routine that includes cannabis, I believe, and how how long cannabis has been part of your life? Sure. So first and foremost, cannabis was part of my life since the age of uh, 22, which is relatively late. But since then, I'm not stopping uh, for a second. Actually, I am stopping and we can discuss also tea breaks. But yes. uh, generally speaking, I'm... Uh, consuming since uh, the age of 22. Uh, originally, I came from Israel uh, about 14 years ago to Los Angeles. Uh, I studied uh, music business at UCLA and uh, then also served as a, a diplomat at the Israeli consulate for a few years. Wow. And then uh, moved to another nonprofit organization and around... November 2016, I decided to join the cannabis space, and uh, currently I have three different hats in in this uh, industry. Uh, the first one is Grassfed, which is my company that I started uh, back in 2016. It's a hospitality and event production company focused on cannabis, of course. Um, my other hat is I'm the head of business development and operations for an Israeli-American company named Neomedic. And Neomedic is a data and research company conducting clinical research, again, on cannabis as well. And last but not least, you see this beautiful background. I have a leading cannabis podcast for Israeli listeners specifically uh, that I started uh, since COVID, uh, since I have a lot of free time. <laughs> and uh, I think we recorded the uh, episode uh, 152, so 152 episodes so far. Yes, I saw that. I uh, bravely tapped into Spotify, I believe is where you're, the platform's at on, and thought, okay, let me check this out. I couldn't understand a lick of that you guys were saying, but you guys ha sounded like you guys having a great time. Um, what do you guys talk about on the podcast? Sure. So first and foremost, uh, about 50% of our guests are from the American industry, hence 50% uh, of the uh, episodes are in English, more or less. Um, and we talk about cannabis uh, all over, all, uh, 360, if you will. So anywhere from uh, cannabis culture, regulation, business and entrepreneurship, uh, science and research, of course, and, and whatnot. Okay. Okay. That's very good. I find it to be very educational for uh, primarily most of our audience just to uh, consume the cannabis education in an open conversation type of way. I think it's so uh, flowing. It's It just flows a lot easier for other people to understand and relate. So I love hearing that you have a podcast. I also went and checked out grass. Is it grass feed or grass fed? Grass fed. Yeah. Like grass, grass -fed, fed milk or grass fed meat. Yes, beautiful website. Have to say, very, very clean. Aesthetically, it was very just eye catchy and something. Can, dive into that. Tell me a little bit of what you guys do for that as far as services. And if I was, you know, in the community, how I can use you guys. Absolutely. So, first and foremost, we provide cannabis services for private events, mm -hmm. weddings, birthday parties, holiday parties, uh, album release parties. Basically, every event or every host who would like to incorporate cannabis in the most sophisticated way possible. Mm -hmm. uh, now, we try to also promote non-smoke environment, meaning that smoke-free environment, if you will. Um, so and also promote, promote yeah, and, and I'll talk about it in a second, promote hash culture as well. Um, 
you know, there are a few reasons for that, and I can, you know, mention a few. First and foremost, when it comes to private events, most of the venues here in California don't allow uh, com um, gotcha. uh, smoke yeah. or uh, com combustion in inside or indoors. And hence, uh, we needed to find alternative ways to consume. Vaporizers are great, uh, and of course, cannabis drinks and edibles are allowed as well. So we try to focus on vaping slash dabbing. Mm -hmm. as well as uh, fast-acting drinkables and cocktails, as well as other type of edibles. That's fantastic. And to my understanding, you guys have partners that you guys collaborate and bring on um, that serve in those different areas. Is that correct? Do those change at, at, at any time or do they pretty much stay the same? When you say partners, do you mean cannabis partners? Do you mean, yeah. So yeah, I saw have... some um if I were, you know, just checking out your website, I saw some partners as far, I think 710 was on there, sure. um, had some dab companies on there, which is great, great, great brand. So uh, yeah, tell us a little bit how that looks for you guys or how that works as far as, you know, collaborating with them. Yeah, we also procure uh, products for our clients. So, you know, some of our couples or, or other clients come to us and say, hey, we don't have any idea about cannabis or what we want to offer to our guests. Help us. Tell us what to do. Obviously, we want to learn more about their uh, guests and their preferences uh, uh, and, and, and obviously find out more details just to dial down the experience. And also, we you know, like to work with trusted brands from the Californian industry, the brands that we typically like, personally like. You know, I showed 710 and Puffco, some of my favorites. Um, <laughs> you know, we want to make sure that the quality is there in every event. We don't want to have uh, clients that uh, uh, don't like the, the experience or don't like the products that we chose for them. Mm -hmm. And hence, we try to you know, choose one of the best products for them. 710 and Puffco's are one of them, but we also work with uh, West Coast Pure, uh, with Papa and Barkley, uh, Artet, which is a cannabis beverage, and, and, and a few more. So, yeah, I love that because I think for the most part, when they're coming into it, maybe from an outside industry, but realizes that most of the people now are very uh, interested in cannabis or, you know, don't drink alcohol and lean towards more of the plant medicine side. So I think a lot of people in the event space are trying are looking at this. Uh, I know you had touched a little bit about music and cannabis being kind of a, you know, synergy there. Do you guys focus on going outside as or seeing like the music industry as another way of kind of normalizing it? Absolutely. Uh, first and foremost, I have a great passion for music. I think music and cannabis is is a awesome combination, is a magical combination. Uh, they're both uh, medicinal in their own way. They're both spiritual in their own way. And they both connect people all over the world. So, you know, the, the, uh, the fact that it connects people rather than divide people, it's, it's something very special to me. And again, something is happening in your brain while you're consuming cannabis and listening to music, whether it's live music or recorded music. So that's that. And I think music as an industry is a great tool to market cannabis and cannabis products to the mainstream uh, audience. Yeah. Um, everyone likes to consume cannabis. Uh, there are different genres that, you know, historically and culturally are intertwined with cannabis. You know, we can mention reggae music, we can re uh, mention uh, jazz and funk and hip hop, of course. Um, so there is room for everyone. And I feel like, you know, the fact that you can use uh, artists uh, to bridge the gap between cannabis and mainstream society it could be huge for the cannabis industry. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's uh, it, it's really good to have an open, diverse opportunity as far as being a industry that is able to tap into wellness and also the fun side of it with entertainment. And I'm seeing a lot of that now. Obviously, when we go to festivals and concerts, most of us are already sneaking it in. So to see that some of these places are now incorporating areas that have this for us to consume, not that it's primarily, you know, you're still seeing majority of the alcohol stands there, but you're seeing one or two activations from a cannabis brand. And, and I, I hope to see more of that. Um, I have 
a, you know, previous guest that does a lot of festivals outside in Mexico and Colombia, and they're trying, you know, to figure out how to bring hemp into that. With you being in um, Niamedic, are you seeing the bridge in these different countries right now as well? And how does that look for you guys as far as when you're doing testing um, for your plant plant based community? So, yeah, we mentioned music as, uh, you know, a bridge uh, to mainstream uh, audience. I think Neomedic and research is the bridge to the medical community because we know that doctors are still hesitant to recommend cannabis, whether it's for legal reasons or because they're uneducated and we need to, you know, tell it out loud. Most doctors, or not, if not all of them, do not study uh, about the endocannabinoid system in med schools. Right. And when you, as a patient, come to a doctor, ask for some help or some assistance or some recommendations when it comes to cannabis consumption, uh, you don't get uh, clear answers. Uh, again, because they, they're not aware of the, the current information that there, there is around. Yeah. And again, as we are, uh, as Neomedic, our, our role, one of our roles is to bridge this information, uh, help uh, cannabis companies conduct clinical research. Again, not in vitro, not animals, uh, they're all very important uh, type of trials and research, but to me, the most important is human trial, yeah. you know, because only after we have uh, great results on humans, uh, that will allow doctors to gain the trust and have more information about the right dosage, the right protocol, what to use, how to use it, et cetera, et cetera. So I think there is a still a, a, a big gap between the medical community and the cannabis community. But hopefully that we'll see uh, uh, some rapid change in the next three to five years. Yeah, you know, I have um, there's a lot of women that are RNs and they're tapping into the certified side of becoming a nurse that can certify education in cannabis. And I and I can tell that it's slowly finding its way there. But again, I think, like you said, it comes with a lot of the R&D uh, behind it for it to move forward. And yeah, I, I truly hope that there's people like yourselves and your organization that that have the opportunity to get in front of these doctors and really educate them so that they're comfortable and know how to implement it in you know whatever case they have. So I'm excited that you guys you know exist and are out there. The other part that excites me about what you guys do is that it seems like you guys have, and I don't know what cannabis looks like for Israel. Um, how, what is that? Like I, I, your podcast sounds really fun. It's Kush. It's from Cali to Kush in Hebrew. It's uh, Mikali but Kush in English from Cali to Kush. Got it. Okay. Yeah. How'd you guys come up with that? And how's the like response from the audience on that side, as far as what you guys are doing there? Yeah. First and foremost, Israel in terms of cannabis culture is way behind. Mm -hmm. when I need to compare it to the culture here in California or in North America, generally speaking. But when it comes to research, it's still at the forefront of uh, uh, global research. And I want to say Israel is one of the top three uh, countries that uh, is leading cannabis research today, uh, whether it's in Israel or abroad. Again, we have some Israeli scientists that work in Canada, in Germany, in the U.S. to conduct uh, cannabis research. Um, so, yeah, research-wise, we are definitely um, on, on top of things. Uh, Culture-wise, again, we're not there yet be also because it's not legal. So uh, there is a medical program in Israel uh, since, I think, 2009 or 2010, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. um, it's pretty limited and overly regulated. Not surprised, of course, cannabis. But uh, long story short, uh Patients can buy only cannabis flowers and tinctures these days in Israel. The okay. quality is fine. It's not the Californian quality as we know. Right. But it's it's okay. It's definitely getting better uh, throughout the years. Are we talking but, about um, THC, CBD, hemp? Both. Oh, both. both. Okay. Okay. Both are, are are legal in Israel. Uh, they have you know specific categories whether it's C4 and T20, meaning that that you have up to 4% CBD and up to 20% THC, for instance. They have like six or seven different uh, categories when it comes to CBD and THC ratios. Okay. Um, now, so because of, you know, the lack of diversity and because they don't have too many uh, products to choose from, 
Yeah. Uh, they don't have vaporizers. They don't have edibles. Uh, they don't have concentrates or, or vape pens. Because of that, the culture is still not there yet. Not to say that, uh, you know, the traditional market, uh, we do see some of those products that I mentioned. Uh, yeah. because, you know, it's, it's, uh, um, you know, everyone is connected to, uh, to the U.S. and everyone can see what's going on here online. So people are starting to demand those products in the uh, uh, black market or the legacy market, if you will. Yeah. But yeah, when it comes to the legal market, it's still, you know, lacking behind. Wow. That's interesting. The dynamic of, you know, they have it there, but they're still, you know, limited to what they can have access to, which, again, something that we fight in the cannabis industry all the way around as far as, you know, the the uh, fine lines in the regulations that we have to abide by. Um, well, I love everything that you, you're doing. It sounds like you're very busy being an educator, being a voice firm, all the way from California to touching the audience out there in Israel. Now, is your audience, a, like I imagine on Spotify, is there commenting on there? I believe there's commenting on there. Um, what's the interaction look like? What's like primarily the questions that you you get from there to people that are living here in North America? So yeah, uh, just to clarify, uh, the podcast is also available on other platforms. Spotify is just one of them. Okay. Um, and because you can upload only a hundred episodes to Spotify, if you want to go back, just go to other platforms like Google or Podbin, uh, dot com. Uh, so you can scroll down and see all the other episodes. Um, but okay. when it comes to our audience, uh, eighty five percent of our listeners are based in Israel. Uh, the rest are based in either North America or other places in the world. So each one has its own unique perspective on the industry. Not to mention that also, and that's my assumption, of course, most of our listeners from Israel, I would say, are either industry people or people who want to get into the industry and learn more from us. What's the dynamic look like as far as women-men ratio? Well, I don't know. Um, well, I can tell you my perspective. When it comes to our, our guests, I'm trying to bring more and more women. I'm mm -hmm. trying to highlight women in the industry. I think we have too many men, uh, too many white men, to be honest, in, in our industry. And we need more diversity, more women uh, of colors or in general. Um, yeah. So that's first. And second, when it comes to our listener, I want to say the majority are still men. I don't have the statistics, but I want to believe that about 70, 70 plus percent of our listeners are men and the rest are women. Um, and again, maybe because most of the industry in Israel is still controlled by men, still like men dominated. So right. Right. I hope to change it somehow. We're trying to promote it uh, among women. Um, we try to encourage women to join the industry in Israel. Um, there are some great talented women, uh, whether from the research world, uh, the cultivation world, uh, the extraction world. Even here in California, I had some amazing guests from the extraction world, like one of the best hash makers in California. So truly, I believe that uh, we should see more women in this space. Um, I hope that they will follow eventually. Yeah, it, you know, I have to ask that because I know here uh, where we're, we're, I'm in California, so it's growing and we're noticing that more women are are part of this industry, not not just as, you know, the backbone or um, the operation side, they're either cultivating, they're owning, you know, 50% or launching their own brands. Uh, so I just had to see, you know, what your perspective was on that coming from, you know, you having an audience worldwide rather than, you know, just United States. So I hope that the women there get an opportunity to learn about plant medicine. You know, I, I it's a disfortunate, especially mothers, if they're going through, you know, hard pregnancy. I know it was something that I used throughout my pregnancy and a lot of women are afraid to talk about that. But, you know, I have two beautiful, healthy babies and uh, if it wasn't for that, I would have been, you know, pumped with Zofran and all types of pharmaceuticals that just would deteriorate other things, you know, within my body. So 
I am hopeful that the women's voice is making an impact worldwide and, uh, you know, we continue the fight and educating, like you said, both men and women from all ends. So keep doing what you guys do. I hope your podcast, you know, there's more women that are maybe there that maybe are afraid to talk because like you said, it's male dominated. It's probably still controlled. And the stigma, I think the stigma is still there. You know, people oh, tend to been. think that, hey, it's California. Hey, it's 2023. Everyone loves cannabis. Everyone accepts cannabis. That's not true. Yeah. That's definitely not true. And while we see some progress and people are, you know, more uh, um, accepting cannabis as a, as a substance, it's not even comparable or close to be comparable to alcohol. You oh, yeah. said you're a mom of two. Uh, I have two uh, children as well. You know, uh, when we have, you know, play dates or we have uh, other parents over uh, from their school, there is no problem to serve beer or wine and to have a toast. When I ask my wife, hey, can I, I don't know, get a vape out or, or even have like cannabis drinks right. offered to some of the guests, she say no. Yeah. And like a she's saying it not because she's not a consumer she's consuming herself okay yeah uh but on the other hand she's still afraid of this stigma of what people will think of her what other parents will think of her what mm -hmm. type of mother is she that she's consuming cannabis around her kids so again 2023 california we still have a lot of work to change the stigma and uh make it at least as uh acceptable as alcohol again i personally believe that it's safer, healthier, better for our society compared to alcohol. So um, it checks all the boxes compared to alcohol. But again, the stigma is still, uh, um, you know, putting us in the back, yeah. sometimes in the shade, sometimes in the green closet. But we still need to fight back and to you know, show the world that this is a very safe substance that makes us a better version of ourselves, unlike alcohol that sometimes can create the worst version of ourselves, if you will. Yep, absolutely well said. And I, I think I touch on that quite often with other guests is culturally, I don't think cannabis is where it's supposed, to, where it's at. Um, I come from a you know diverse background with my dad coming from the Philippines, completely cool, chill, supportive of the business that I have, um, helped me create my logo. And my mom is from El Salvador and she sees it as a complete drug related um, substance. And, you know, uh, did it, you try it, to talk to her? Did you try to convince her or did it didn't work well, out? Well, you know, cannabis has been part of my life for quite some time since I was probably 16. And they I've been very open about it since then. I've always been a very ambitious woman and um very successful in, in everything that I have I've done. I have a heavy corporate background in banking, was successful in that. I never gave them a reason to really fit into that reefer madness, stoner, you know, half-baked movie vibe. Of course, I like to have fun, chill, and hang out with my friends. But when the time has to be turned on, I could turn on that corporate side of me. And um, I also did bodybuilding and I used cannabis during that time and I competed and it was very much part of my life. So for me, I think they see kind of where I'm at. So it's more of you do it over there. Don't bring it around me. However, my my mother still, you know, smokes cigarettes and drinks alcohol. So you know, those are, you know, arguments, debates, I would say, healthy debates that we still go through, but it's really hard for her to see it um, other than, you know, you're, you're just getting high. Like, you know, there's no, if my sister who is more corporate HR, she doesn't consume either. She also um, partakes in cigarettes. They get along better. They just have a better relationship because I choose to not drink alcohol or smoke uh, cigarettes and to each their own. They can do that. Uh, but my thing is, if it's so openly accepted to do that, and like you said, I, I, I completely understand where your wife is coming from when she doesn't really... We don't have play dates with with other parents because of that reason. And it makes it hard. Um, it really allow. I, and I think this is why a lot of people in the cannabis industry really sh like strive to find their own community. It, we it's just what makes us kind of 
flow aligned with our values and what we believe as far as where cannabis is and how we want to raise our children. I grew around my kids. Um, you know, I remember my girl, my baby girl still being in a car seat, my boy being two while I'm trimming, they're playing with leaves. <laughs> um, it, it's, I just never hit it or made it seem like I'm, I'm going to go smoke in the, in the bathroom, because to me, I think that gives them kind of like, well, why are you hiding it where the majority of people have alcohol on their counter, you know, at all times, all day long, you know, they even say, um, you know, have a glass of wine every day, or, you know, you have the wine shirt. So yeah, I have been the black sheep for a very long time for the reason of believing that cannabis is a lot healthier and um, truly has been a gateway to a lot of opportunities that has gotten me to where I am now. And so, um, and, and that includes me rebaptizing myself. And so a lot of people, I'm open about that. And um, I just think there's a lot of work that needs to be done on an educational level culturally. So I, I was really excited to have you on specifically as, as you mentioned, you mentioned tobacco as well. Uh, another <laughs> legal substance that Everyone who's 21 and up can purchase legally and freely. Yep. Uh, and, and again, when you compare it to cannabis, it's just way worse in yep. so many ways. Mm -hmm. um, without mentioning even sugar, which is legal to everyone from the age of zero and would be and more addictive than probably yep. alcohol and, and tobacco, or maybe at least equally addictive. Yes. Um, and it's still legal and people are dying from it every year, again, from alcohol and tobacco too. Yep. Yes, from cannabis, no one dies. And again, on the other side, I, I don't want to be hypocritical here and say that cannabis is perfect and it's great for everyone and you consume every day, all day. Everybody's I mean, th there is, you know, you need to take some responsibility and, and I, I, I believe that you need to consume with intention. Uh, we shouldn't normalize cannabis in a way that we drink water, okay? I mean, I love cannabis, I love weed, but it's not addictive on one hand, but you can definitely develop some uh, abuse, and you can abuse the plant, you can overconsume. Uh, I mentioned before our, our conversation that uh, I'm about to start a, a tolerance break, which I believe in as well. Again, on one hand, I really like hash, culture, and dabbing. I love the flavors. I love the experience. I love the high. Yeah. But on the other hand, I know that it, uh, it, uh, it affects my, my tolerance level. And I know that after three, four, five months of uh, consecutive dabbing, my tolerance level went bonkers. It's, it's yeah. too high that I need to dab like three times in a row in order to get high. Uh, and I'm not sure that it's, that good for our endocannabinoid system. I think we should definitely research more about that specifically, dabbing uh, and the communication with the, the endocannabinoid system. But with that said, you know, cannabis is abuse is real. We need to admit it. We need to uh, uh, know it and be educated about uh, cannabis abuse. But on the other hand, not uh, don't be hypocritical as a society, legalize alcohol, legalize uh, 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 tobacco and sugar and say no to cannabis for more than 80 years now it just doesn't make any sense yeah which is what i i'm sure is like what's boggling and, and what's the hold up behind there so there's there's always something that that makes me concerned about that um well i really do appreciate you giving us a little bit of background at, on that i really love that you touched on sugar uh being you know a fitness enthusiast that is one of the biggest thing that people in a society especially western society does not even look at as a bad you know something that's actually pushed in our face through um, advertising through tv and it's just become so normal that they're not even aware of how um how to safely consume it, <laughs> in other words. Uh, when I see my kids and I see the culture around my kids and how they're exposed to sugar and sugar treats, uh, not to mention the level of the sugar that they're getting, it could be horrible too. It's just, yeah, it's mind-boggling. And I, I'm trying to change it as well. I'm trying to change, to break this, uh, um, you know, uh, circle, if you will, of yeah. kids and sugar. Yeah. Um, it's, it's a very hard battle, you know, yeah. with kids. Yep. Almost impossible, I would say, but I'm definitely trying to manage it better um, than my parents that didn't manage it as well as when I was a kid. 
Yeah, I think um, a lot of us now, especially in the cannabis industry, have been a little bit more intentional with our parenting. And so that comes with doing the hard stuff, not always being the good guy. And unfortunately, it's it's tough at that moment, but it you know it's always worth at the end because I started doing the same thing and just being aware of like all the different ingredients, just being aware of certain countries banning certain foods that are like totally okay here. Uh, I'd like to question that a little bit. So I'm also that person in my family. So I get a lot of havoc from all ends, but, you know, I think it's given me a lot of peace in my journey and to where I'm at and being, you know, using my voice as a woman and, and using my platform to have people like you on here. So, um, I don't want to take too much of your time. Cause I know we're probably all busy. I got to get our kids, but I have like a rapid fire, which is like a seven grams that I call it. And I'd love to go through that with you. Um, yeah. I will make sure that we put everything to find you and support Nymedics, grass fed and your podcast on our link. So to all you guys watching, make sure you guys check out the description. Appreciate it. Of course. All right, Dan, we do you need a dab? That, by the way, uh, I just took one. Puffco proxy, Puffco proxy. Uh, that's yes. uh, a different attachment. You can. It's a modular vaporizer. You can. It's only it to, it's dry though, right? Uh, this one is dry, but I have a wet one too. So this okay, one I is wet. Two. Oh yes, just, right, right. But the proxy doesn't okay. come in the wet. Oh, it, it can come on anything you want, dry or wet. Uh, I have another one wet. Uh, this one could be wet as well. Yeah. Oh, I love that one. Yeah. That's like their, um, I think, a bestseller when it comes to water filtration. Yeah. But I think they killed it when it comes to, again, uh, breaking the stigma and yeah. also uh, making uh, dabbing less intimidating because, you know, back in the days 10 years ago when you saw like a big torch. I could not. That's not very encouraging no, or uh, inviting people to do, right? Yeah, no. And, and this is like a more, uh, I would say, familiar uh, form of consumption. You know, yeah. the shape, uh, the fact that it's, it's, it's a small vaporizer, like a heating source. This yeah. more friendly overall. Yeah, totally. I, I find it, yeah, very classy. Um, I find it, you know, women are more appealing to use something like that than, like you said, having a, a big torch. Uh, yeah, no, those were mainly the reasons why I never dabbed till they, I started discovering the e-rigs and that has made a life changer for me. Absolutely. I've got to get one of those. Um, all right, we're going to start with number one. And again, you know, in my podcast, I like to highlight the creatives in our industry, uh, how much plant medicine is part of the wellness industry as well. So you're going to have different type of questions that kind of surround that. We're going to start with what is your favorite way to working out? Running, hands down. I'm a runner. I run Get a high there too. Yeah. four or five times a week. Uh, I also uh, ran LA Marathon in 2012. Um, I just like long distance running and maybe it's a coincidence, but maybe not because I read that researchers found that the uh, runner's high is almost equivalent to a THC high. Yeah. So in yeah. a way it makes a lot of sense. I feel great after I'm running, you know, rarely I run high, but sometimes I do, but you know, when it comes to running, I, I prefer to be sober most of the time also yeah. because I'm doing it in the morning most of the time. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, running is definitely the, the number one. Uh, the second one will be basketball. Oh, I love that. Shout out to Kobe too, because it's his birthday today. Oh yeah. Um, yes. A yeah. huge fan. Always was a huge fan. It's like ever since he's gone, it's no more Lakers for me. <laughs> Never been the same. Um, okay. Sure. I love that. Love basketball because it's, it's a hell of a workout when it's just yourself and the ball too. So there's so many ways you can get a good workout with that. Uh, favorite way to consume your herb. I think I know that now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, dabbing. Hands yeah. down. I just love hash. Uh, I love the flavor, like the modern hash or water hash or live rosin, whatever you want to name it. You know, I, I also traditional hash could be super yummy and tasty, but you have to mix it with tobacco or with, you have to smoke like the it. Like bubble hash. Yeah. Yeah. But powder, when like it comes to purity and flavor and terpenes, Damn, water hash and live rosin is, is the way to go. Not to mention, also, the high is pretty clear and energetic if you're doing it on uh, low temperatures. And this is something that you also uh, focus on at our events. 
all the dabbing is low temperature dabbing, you know, just to have this mellow experience rather than overwhelming experience, right. especially for first timers. Yeah. So yeah, dabbing in low temperatures, that's, that's the way to go. Any preference on solventless or solvent products as far as when it comes to concentrates? Solventless. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm a snob. I'm, I'm a connoisseur. Right. The uh, longer we've been in it, that's, that's the facts. <laughs> I mean, it is pricier and I see, yeah. you know, prices going down in the past six months or so. Yeah. Uh, I, listen, you can still get some killer, uh, BHO live resin, yeah. uh, especially from 710 or, or from other com- uh, brands like Bezel. Um, but yeah, when it comes to, uh, purity and, and flavor, solventless is the way to go to me. I, yeah, I'm on the same boat. Uh, all right. Thank you for answering that. What's your favorite music genre? That's a tough one. Uh, <laughs> again, music is <laughs> my number one passion in, in life. I play bass guitar. Um, <laughs> I love many genres. I'm going to name a few and then I, I'll, I'll come back to probably my favorite. So uh, I love jazz. I love funk music. I love hip hop. I love reggae. Uh, I love indie rock. I love classic rock and roll. Um, I love some classical music, yep. whether it's classical from back in the days or like modern classical music. But yeah, when it comes to the basics, you know, still the 60s and 70s rock bands and artists were the most influential on, on, on me, on my personality or on who I am. Mm-hmm. So I can mention in this regard, uh, the Beatles, uh, Bob Dylan, uh, the Doors, Pink Floyd, you know, all the um, really the biggest and the greatest from that era, uh, Johnny Mitchell, uh Led Zeppelin of course uh and today yeah I mean when you look at my playlist it has basically all of the genres that I mentioned um so it's a it's a mishmash it really depends on the the moment uh, the event and whether I'm running if it's with the family or if I'm listening on on my headphones so there are many questions to ask but with that said I like it all yeah. yeah, as I've gotten older, there's some genres that I did not think I would be tapping into, like classical music or jazz, um, or even blues, uh, even, you know, very Hispanic cultural type of music, which really has has opened my eyes to that, which I, I personally enjoy all types of music as well. So yeah, it's kind of a hard question, but you mentioned, you mentioned Hispanic music. And I think that's some of the beauty and magic uh, about music is, you know, I can listen to an old French song or a Spanish song that I have, I don't know even one word of what they're singing about, yet I'll be so touched and moved uh, uh, from the from the sound and uh, um, from the environment that the artist or band has, has built. So you, I think music is a language of its own. You don't need to necessarily understand all the lyrics to enjoy it. Obviously, when it comes to Bob Dylan or the Beatles, you also enjoy the lyrics, not only the music itself. Right. But again, music in its core is for everyone. And again, um, you don't need to understand every word uh, to get the thrills. Yeah, yeah, no, totally. Well said. Here's another one that's probably going to throw you off. What animal would you be in another life? Oh, I'll probably be my 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 own dog. Um, I have a I love golden doodles. They're that the little? best family. Uh, he's actually standard. Uh, she's actually standard. So she's half golden retriever and half poodle, but standard oh. poodle. So okay, she is like they can almost be seventy tall. pounds. Yeah, yeah, she's pretty big. Uh, but she's so friendly and so warm, and so lovely to my kids that. Um, and, and she's eager to please. She always wants us to be happy. Yeah. So um, while I like to please others, uh, I like her very warm and friendly, uh, playful uh, uh, character, if you will. Yeah, yeah. No, we have a St. Bernard, and he is so good with the kids. Oh, so cute. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, my my daughter's only two, and you know Saint Bernard's. He looks exactly like the Beethoven movie dog. Yeah. Um, his head is so big, and she's always like, and he 
does not care. Like if she is not, if she could pull his tail, his head, yeah. he loves everything about it. So I, I exactly. personally enjoy seeing my, my daughter enjoy him. <laughs> that um, Okay, now uh, name one person that inspires you the most. Wow. Uh, from the industry, from outside the industry. I would say just who you think may have inspired you to be who you are today as, as, as Dan. My wife, uh, in the past, uh, 10 years, I think, obviously when, when it comes to marriage and relationship, it's like <laughs> going that way. It's yeah. never perfect and it's never always happy. Yeah. But we learned so much together and she taught me uh, to dig a little bit deeper, uh, whether it's within me or within us as a couple. Yeah. Uh, she was a great influence on me, uh, whether it's as an entrepreneur, uh, as, a, as a human, a human being, if you will. Right. Um, so and, and she's like the most close person physically and mentally to, to me. So. You know, that's, that's, uh, that's the easy answer. I love it. It's perfect. Hopefully she sees this. Um, I think you and uh, Brian actually gave some same answers. So really tells me that you guys are a family guy. And, and I love that. Um, okay. Two more. If you had to give someone a book that you've read, which one would it be? I'll talk about cannabis if, if you don't mind. Of course. And, um, there's a few books. I'll, I'll I'll mention the authors if it's okay because he has a few books and I really recommend following him. Uh, he was also on my podcast. His name is Max Montrov, okay. and he's one of the biggest cannabis and psychedelic experts that I know. So if you learn about if you want to learn about cannabis and or psychedelic, follow this person. He wrote I think at least two books. Um, and, uh, he's running also a program. I forgot the name of the program that he's running, which is a cannabis uh, education program. Uh, the Tricom Institute, that's the name of the program. Okay. Yep. I think I've seen that. Great. So, uh, um, that's, that's definitely one of the, uh, you know, books that you want to read, okay. whether it's his first or second book. Uh, if you want to learn about cannabis, from many different angles, he's the guy. Yeah, actually, now that you're saying that, it's it's really dawned on me. Their content is so, so good. I love their educational pieces. <laughs> but generally speaking, bench, but generally speaking, I have to admit, um, I basically stopped reading books when I was, I want to say, 25 or so. Really? Yeah. Okay. I'm no, not in my favor. I'm not proud of it. But when it comes to reading, it's mainly informative books yeah. like Max's uh, and other types of uh, reading, but not uh, good old, old romance or uh, you know, yeah. classical books. Yeah. Um, not to mention that we are bombarded with so many activities and information these days from your computer, from your smartphone, from your children. You name it. So oh. I wish I had more time to also read books these days. I think it's important. Yeah. I find music as my, uh, you know, place to escape. Like okay. my es escapism would be music, whether it's live music or recorded music. Yeah, no, I love that answer. I'm actually just incorporating reading into my life now. And so I guess I would be the opposite because I, I would have never dared to pick up a book anywhere in my 20s. Now I'm actually enjoying, um, I've made it, I have a very intentional morning routine when it comes to what I, I try to do with, between the hours of before my children wake up. And so I try to get in like 10 pages, um, which is part of a program that I'm on, but uh, I've learned to know what I like to read that keeps me active because sometimes I'll find myself just not even actively in, interested in what I'm reading or having to reread things. So as I'm growing in this space, um, I know personal development has been a huge thing. Anything related to cannabis or um, psilocybin absolutely has my attention. Um, or just uh, human behavior, it really fascinates me. So um, that and gut health. I think gut health's my newest like infatuation because people really overlook how important the microbiome is as far as our nervous system. And so that's a whole different subject, but Yes, I, I to, to touch to touch on my uh, last 
point that uh, I don't have enough time to read books. Uh, luckily, these days they have audio books that you yes. can conveniently. Uh, it makes it much easier. I, I haven't tried it yet. I'm listening to a lot of podcasts, yep. cannabis and non-cannabis podcasts, but yeah, for sure we'll give it a try sometime soon. Do you have a podcaster that that was kind of an influence on? I'm going to start my own podcast for you. Uh, yeah, um, I don't think they exist anymore, but. Uh, there was there used to be a cannabis podcast named the Brave New Weed. Okay. Uh, check it out if you don't know it. Uh, again, similar to from Cali to Kush, it covers different aspects and angles of cannabis, whether it's culture, science, uh, business, and entrepreneurship. But uh, for some reason, they stopped. Probably lack of time, like I mentioned before. But I highly recommend. Uh, um, following at least what they recorded and i think they they've been around for at least four or five or maybe six years okay. another one is uh a canna insider mm-hmm. um which is focused on mainly business and entrepreneurship so if you want to be part of the industry uh if you want to know more about the plant uh, canna insider is, is the one awesome i got i wrote those down so i'll definitely check it out all right, last question, and um, we will let you go. What brings you the most joy in life today? Family and music. Simple. Very good answers. I yeah. love that. I mean, obviously, weed is great, too, but honestly, <laughs> weed is not my top uh, two or top three um, to, to be happy. It's there to boost my happiness or creativity, yeah. but it's not going to create my happiness. So family and music will definitely create it. I love that you said boost Um, on my website. One of my slogans is an enhanced way of living. And um, I think that best describes what cannabis does for me in my life. And I think most of the people in our industry. So you, you still are your same person. It either enhances you in a creative way, you know, it makes you more social. There's so many different variables that um, this does for people. And so I appreciate all the time that you've given us and shared with us. I, I look forward to growing with you and community and we support you here and everything you do so make sure you guys check out the links i will be making sure that we put where you can find them on are you guys on instagram or is it just the websites yeah we are uh grassfed.la on instagram if Ah, you want to follow us and i believe you you, um when i went to the website you guys will be able to see there as well all right dan i appreciate you and you know where to find me if you need us we support you have a great day thank you casey you too thank you dan take care cheers bye-bye